Unity's HDRP camera component has physical settings. You can now choose a sensor size, ISO, aperture, focal length and more. These settings will be familiar to photographers and cinematographers. These settings are used not only by the camera itself but also post-processing and exposure settings. They can give you much more control over shot framing and more physically accurate exposure than simply choosing a field of view and working with post-processing effects. This video will explain some of the basics of physical camera concepts and how you can use them to frame and expose a shot. I'm using Unity version 2019.4 and HDRP 7.3.1. I'm going to use a tool I wrote that has some typical camera presets and makes adjusting related camera settings easier. You can install the package from GitHub using the package manager, but using this tool is completely optional and you can change the physical camera settings directly if you'd like. We want to frame a shot so that objects of interest take up enough screen space. You capture everything you want to capture and there is a good balance between foreground and background elements. In the physical camera we can frame using the sensor size, focal length and of course the camera position. The sensor size determines what area of the scene is captured by the camera and also the aspect ratio of the image. In this demo I'll choose a 70mm sensor size and adjust the focal length for framing. I'm going to ignore any sensor cropping for this demo. The focal length is the distance between the sensor and the lens. When the sensor is closer to the lens, then we have a higher field of view. The focal length and the field of view are linked in the camera component. You can set either one. We can play with typical values in the physical camera controller and see how the framing changes. Notice how the scene can become cropped as we change the focal length. I'll use a different scene to illustrate the effects of this. Turning on dolly zoom and setting a focus object, we can see that at a small focal length, the scene appears to be much longer. There is more separation at the background. This is a wide shot. It captures more of the scene. It would be interesting for a close-up shot. At a longer focal length, the background comes in closer. Lines are more parallel. This may be useful for a shot that includes many elements at various distances. This tool is really just for helping you choose the focal length. If you need this functionality at runtime, then Cinemachine is a great choice. Now that we have the shot framed how we'd like it, it's time to look at exposure. Be careful to set lighting to have physically realistic intensities for your environment before you play with exposure. Exposure is a combination of ISO, shutter speed and aperture. For these settings to have any effect, you must have an exposure volume override with the mode set to use physical camera. ISO is the sensitivity of the virtual film to light. In this demo, I'm going to set it to 200. This is a typical value for film and I'm going to leave it at that. The shutter speed is how long the shutter is open for. Typical values here double or half at each step. When using a camera, we're typically letting in twice as much or half as much of the light. The aperture setting in HDRP is actually the f-stop. These terms are used interchangeably in photography, but it's important to differentiate them here. The f-stop is the ratio of the focal length to the aperture width. This gives us a way to talk about the amount of light hitting a sensor no matter what the focal length is. A higher f-stop has a smaller aperture diameter and will let in less light. Typical f-stop values approximately double or half the aperture area and so the amount of light that hits the sensor. If we double the shutter speed, we let in half the amount of light. Moving down an f-stop doubles the aperture area, so we have roughly the same exposure. In the physical camera control, I can lock the exposure. Any changes to the f-stop or shutter speed will change the other value to keep the same exposure. Why would we care what our f-stop value is? Well, it could be used to create a narrow depth of field effect. 
a large aperture width, which is a small f-stop, will let in a lot of light, but it will also reduce the distance the lens can keep objects in focus. This narrow depth of field is often used to blur the background to draw more attention to objects in the foreground. We can take the distance to our focal plane and then add in a depth volume override. We can set it to use the physical camera properties. Set the depth of field distance to just before our focal plane. Then, with the exposure locked, I can adjust the f-stop to get the depth of field that I like for this scene. Now we have a nicely framed shot and the correct exposure and depth of field. It's easy for me to change values and set up different cameras in my scene for different situations.